In this video we're going to show how to perform the slump test. The slump test provides a quick means of checking the workability of successive batches of concrete on site. It's not applicable to non-plastic concrete and must be carried out on concrete which has been correctly sampled and handled according to New Zealand Standard 3112 Part 1 and within 15 minutes of obtaining the sample. You'll need the following equipment. A small spade to ensure the sample taken can be remixed just prior to doing the test. A scoop, preferably sized so that it fits easily into the slump cone opening. A slump cone to the dimensions shown on the screen. A wet cloth. A tamping rod to the dimensions shown with a round hemispherical tip. A trowel. A measuring rule. And a level, rigid and non-absorbent surface on which to carry out the test, away from sources of vibration. A steel plate or a smooth precast concrete paving slab or a concrete slab cast into the ground are all acceptable alternatives, but a piece of plywood lying loosely on the ground is not satisfactory. You'll also need some gloves. Make sure that the sample to be tested and all your equipment is within easy reach before you start filling the slump cone. Wipe the test surface in the slump cone with a damp cloth. Ensure the slump cone is held steady during the filling stages. Most slump cones are held in place by standing on the metal tabs, as shown. Fill it with concrete to about one third of its capacity, which is approximately 65 millimetres above the bottom of the cone. Compact the concrete by rotting with 25 blows of the tamping rod. Distribute the blows uniformly over the cross section of the layer, angling as necessary and throughout its depth. Take care to not tap the sides of the cone between layers or hit the metal. Fill the cone to approximately two thirds of its capacity which is around 150 millimetres above the bottom of the cone, and compact again by rotting 25 times as before, taking care to only allow the rod to just penetrate the first layer. Fill the cone completely and add extra concrete to heap it above the top of the cone. Compact by rotting 25 times again, and take care to only allow the rod to just penetrate the second layer. If the rotting causes the concrete to drop below the top of the cone, add more concrete as rotting proceeds to maintain an excess above the cone. Strike off the top surface of the concrete with the trowel, not the tamping rod, and remove all surplus concrete from around the base of the cone. Remove the cone from the concrete by raising it carefully in a vertical direction over a two second period. Use a steady upward lift without twisting the cone or removing it on an angle. Not too fast. Don't rock back on your feet to lift the cone, and don't kick the plate to ensure you get a good level top for measuring. Measure the slump by determining the difference between the height of the cone and the highest point of the concrete, even if the highest point is a piece of aggregate sticking out. Record your measurement to the nearest 10 millimetres. Detailed written instructions for performing the slump test can be found in the CCANZ Information Bulletin number 49, available on our website. CCANS would like to thank the crew of Firth and Whangarei for their time and the use of their facilities.